Welcome everyone, I am Leroy Truth for Leroy Truth Investigations and always record the police so we can hold them accountable. Today's story, a very sad update on a story that I covered a few days ago. This is in reference to Claire Noland, a 95-year-old Australian woman who was in a nursing home suffering from severe dementia. She lived a vital and extraordinary life until she was going through a mental health crisis last week and a police officer fearing for his life tasered her. And from what I understand from the front, she was tasered from the front and from the back. I'm looking for confirmation on that. She fell, fractured her head multiple places. And the sad news to share, ladies and gentlemen, is she has died. And the officer is being charged with some various Criminal acts, shall we say, not nearly what it needs to be charged with. And not only is that disturbing, of course, that should have never happened. But the chief of police is refusing to watch the body cam footage. She won't watch it. And I'm going to show you a couple things. And one is when people say, oh, it's just an anomaly. Oh, Australian police are really nice. No, they're not. In many, many cases, it's worse than America. They don't have a Bill of Rights. Again, the police here, they don't respect it whatsoever. But I have many, many subscribers from Australia. And a shout out to all of you. I appreciate you. And many of you have been sending me updates on this story. So thank you. And let's go into this video here, which shows that this, the head of the police refuses to watch Body cam footage. New details are emerging this morning about the police officer who tasered 95-year-old Claire Nowland in New South Wales. The Sydney Morning Herald reports the senior constable unlawfully detained a suspect in 2020 with a Canberra magistrate labelling the incident as outrageous and unprofessional. Meanwhile, the state's police commissioner is defending her decision not to view the body cam vision of the incident or speak to the officer involved. Nothing's stopping you from looking at that, that video. Is there? But it's not going to change my view about it. Wouldn't you pick... Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. It's not going to change my view about it. That will show the egregious depravity with which that police officer acted on a 95-pound, 5-foot-2, little, frail, 95-year-old great-grandmother. That person should be fired so quickly she doesn't know what hit her. How dare you? Leroy Truth is the name of my channel. The truth shall set you free. She's not willing to face the truth. The phone straight away and say, I want to know exactly what's happened here. I'm not going to interfere. I've got a 95-year-old woman. Was a taser used? I, I'm not going to interfere in an investigation. How do you think you've handled this situation? I can understand the community concern and outrage. I'm not going to interfere with an investigation. Well, lady... It is your job as the head of police to manage, supervise, and hold your people accountable. I want to hear the truth from you. What do you think about your officer's depraved, ended up being murder, of that beautiful 95-year-old Clara Nolan? Claire Nolan. At 80 years old, she was jumping, doing parachute jumping from planes. She lived a vital, incredible life. What a sad way to go at the hands of fearful, cowardly police. Continuing. About what's been reported. And Karen Webb will join us live in studio on today on 9 after 6. All right. So that is just incredibly depraved. Now, let's watch the news conference of this police chief and put in the comments your thoughts. How is she handling this? I can already give you some of mine. It ain't good. And as she talks, she sounds like she's Mary freaking Poppins. And while we are looking into things, and I have a new cookie recipe for my chocolate chip oatmail, banana, kiwi cookies. And oh, and my officer tased them. You'll hear how she talks. She, she's not taking this seriously. She doesn't think her police officer, from everything I can glean and gather, did anything wrong. How dare that woman fall on the floor so hard, her head, her skull was fractured multiple places. It was, it was her fault. 
the 95 year old Claire Nolan should have had a harder skull. That's what that police chief probably thinks. To watch this and make sure to leave your comments. Now, breaking news now on the police officer who tasered a 95 year old dementia sufferer. Let's go live once again to Isabel Mullen at Cooma Police Station. Isabel, what can you tell us? Well, good evening, Mark. Christian White, that 33-year-old police officer, has just been formally charged with three serious offences. Police Commissioner Karen Webb is expected to address the media in Sydney just before 7 o'clock tonight. Let me run you through his charges. He's been charged with recklessly causing grievous bodily harm, assault occasioning actual bodily harm and common assault. Mr White remains suspended and off his duties, but he has been stood down with pay. All this Stop, stop. Stood down with pay. How can you or I, if we do something in the course of our job, results in the fatal injury of a coworker or a customer that just came in? Because in reality, we the people in any part of the world are the customers of the police. And the masters. We would not be getting paid. We would have been immediately arrested. So that guy who ended up, where this woman ends up dying because she was mortally wounded by him, he is not arrested and he gets to go on a paid vacation. Maybe he'll be going to Disney World. Keep an eye out for him. While Claire Nolan, not Claire Nowland rather, is in hospital receiving end of life care, Mr. White is expected to face Cooma Local Court on July 5. Mark. Isabel Mullen with the very latest from Cooma. Thank you. She, in fact, died. Claire Nowland, I said the name incorrectly before. Claire Nowland has, in fact, died from the serious head injuries that she sustained from being tased by officer. Within the last hour, New South Wales Police have commenced legal action against a 33-year-old senior constable from Monaro Police District for the offences of recklessly inflict grievous bodily harm, assault occasioning actual bodily harm and assault. He will appear. She died. She ended up dying. At the Cooma Local Court on Wednesday the 5th of July this year. This matter now is before the court and there's little more than I can say about it other than to say that the Nowland family have been informed of this development and our thoughts and prayers are with Mrs Nowland and her family this evening. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank the detectives who worked around the clock on this to get to this To get to the bottom of it? Let's see. Point within seven days of that at they have a freaking video that they are refusing to release to the public, ladies and gentlemen, because they say it is against or it is not in the public interest to release this video. They worked around the clock for seven days. These must be some really sharp cookies in the detective work. Look at the freaking video. It'll take you all of what, 10, 15 minutes? Why? Because police are protecting their own, as always. And nasty incident involving Mrs. Nowland and the serious charges now before the court. Are there any questions? Commissioner, how hard is, has the past week been for you with accusations the police will be covering this up, that it will be a snow job, that you, that you will go easy? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And by the way, the press questions that you hear, they are so slanted toward the police. How hard has this been on you? You know, have you needed... A safe room. Did you need a hug multiple times? Have you been able to hug your safe room teddy bear enough? They're making it like this is an anomaly because one of the reporters is going to say, you know, they just everyone's focusing on this one bad act, but the police do mostly good work. Complete crock of horse dot dot dot. Continuing. I've said from the beginning, and it's important now, and I remain the same, that this po this is a proper process to remain fair and to see that the investigation is not prejudiced. And I am confident that we have come to a position now, seven days later, that this matter is before the court without that interference. Are you able to explain the decision to stand him down with pay? He's uh, in, in New South Wales. It's, um, 
you're um, innocent until pro proven guilty. And so he is afforded the same opportunity as any other resident. We, the people, are not afforded by the police innocent until proven guilty. We are guilty until proven guilty. And so police will do everything they can. This is, this is so backwards. This shows transparently in your face, hitting us, boom, 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 and every side, what the police officer here, the chief of police commissioner, thinks about her role and the people's role. And uh, his employment will continue to be reviewed, but at the moment he is still um, suspended from the workplace. Commissioner, could those charges be upgraded at any stage? It is possible. It depends on what happens. What's the morale of the force? She died. I'll keep you updated as to the charges if they're upgraded, which they absolutely need to be. At this point. Well, of course, this has been traumatic for everyone in the, the police force, and this is why. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is pissing me off right here. It has been traumatic for everyone in the police force. This has been traumatic for the family of Claire Nowland and the community and the other residents at the nursing home. Who's going to be next that's going to be attacked by the police? She was in a nursing home for people with much higher level needs. She had severe dementia and she was in mental distress. You're supposed to get professional support and help in places like that. And I also blame the place as well, the nursing home. Why didn't they have the resources necessary to help this woman and instead called police? Police are hammers and everything is a nail. Case and point right here. But oh, it has been so traumatic for the police forces last week. How dare you? How dare you? That is disgusting. Unacceptable, pathetic, sadistic to even say that. Matter. While well, the rest of the police force continues to do their job 24 7 to protect and, and um, look after the citizens of New South Wales. How Why tough it Yeah, like they did with that wonderful great grandmother, Claire Nowlin, how they protected and served the hell out of her. You released the body cam footage or watched it yourself? I'm not the investigator. How, uh, how do you go forward from here in terms of the reputation of the force? Because there are many thousands who do the right thing multiple times every single day that don't make news. And it, all it takes is one or two rogue officers. Legend do you see that how this is a total leading question? The mainstream media here in Australia, in New South Wales, is pathetically out of integrity. They're terrible. These are leading questions. They need to be holding her to account for what happened and not giving her this, que this question which has it embedded in the answer. Well, thousands and thousands of people, uh, police officers, do the right thing, and it's just one or two of these incidents. How are you going to recover from that? This is one big collusion party here, ladies and gentlemen, and most people buy what mainstream media feeds them. Always, always question everything you see in the media, including me. Question what I say. And if I say anything that you feel isn't accurate, you feel isn't truthful, I want you to contact me. We all have blind spots. This is something that I highly respect from Brian of Here's the Deal. He's always asking for feedback. I speak the truth. And I speak the truth as I understand it. But if there's new information or perspectives I'm not seeing, I want to learn. So that you get the unvarnished truth. Mainstream media gives you the unvarnished propaganda that supports the police state and the governments. Rogue officers, and all of a sudden it's headline news for a week. How do you restore trust in well, the police force? The, the community of New South Wales have trust in their police force. And as you say, this is one incident out of many, many calls for service. Over two million calls. Well, well let's pause for a minute there. Is it one incident? Let's take a look. I just did a random search online to see what other incidents could there have been? Is this the only one? There are so many. The Australian police are depraved. Here's one. It was footage that was widely shared on social media. A police officer forcefully arresting an Indigenous teenager at Surrey Hills. Tonight, Ryan Barlow has been found guilty of assault. That's a rare thing when a cop is found guilty. He smashes the kid on his face. Watch this. 
It's three seconds you can't take back. You just slammed him on his face. A teenager on the ground injured and arresting Constable's career crashing down. Are New South Wales police officers adequately trained for those moments? Three years after that moment, a botched arrest captured on camera by the young Indigenous man's friends at Ward Park in Surrey Hills. Police officer Ryan Barlow tonight guilty of assault, occasioning actual body. Guilty of assault. And this has nothing to do with training. Well, actually, it has to do with training and that many of these people are sadistic predator psychopaths. But damn, he's got good posture, doesn't he? Harm. Are you going to apologise to the family? The police officer of just three and a half years maintains this verbal threat caused him fear. He feared for his life. So he swept, swept the leg from this teenager and, and ended up, the teenager ends up having his face smashed on the concrete. Go, Claiming self-defence that he subdued the teenager. Self-defence. As, as you saw... This teenager posed no threat. And the judge, there was actually a judge that had some integrity. They saw the video, like you and I do, and they say, oh, duh, no threat. The cop literally attacked, assaulted for no reason, this young child. Because he was starting to kick. The court heard the leg sweep is not a technique police are trained to use, but it's not prohibited. Still, the magistrate wasn't convinced by Barlow's claim he was under threat in the moment he used such force. The headline making mobile phone footage and vision from the police's own body worn cameras sealing the 31 year old constable's fate. Pause there. This is everything. Always record the police. The mainstream media reporter just admitted it. If it hadn't been for one of that young man's, man's friends to have video recorded it with his phone. And by the way, please record like this. Don't record like this. You get so much more in the frame like this. If that friend had not recorded that, this would not have seen the light of day. That's when the body cam footage then comes forward. That would not have come forward. Literally, the public recording the police. If you get one single message from all of my videos, always record the police, especially if you don't see anything major happening because things escalate like this. So things look okay on the up and up. Record them. You're not doing anything wrong. You know, don't crowd them. You know, keep a you know, distance, 10 feet or, or whatever. But you have that right. And it held this cop accountable. That's why we record police. The description of violent resistance is not corroborated, the magistrate told the court. I simply do not see what the defendant says occurred. You said you'd crack me across the face, mate. Was it acceptable to say those things to the teenager? Do you still believe you use reasonable force? Yet to be sentenced, Barlow could serve time, but it's unlikely he'll again serve the public as an officer on Sydney streets. Is this a bad day for New South Wales Police? In Surrey Hills, Ruth Wynn williams Nine News. And no, uh, he may not serve as a police officer in New South Wales, but... He may come to America and serve in any one of the wonderful communities that police would welcome him into. So because there was video footage, accountability occurred. That is so critically important. And continuing. Oh, well, that's none of your... How, uh, how do you go forward from here in terms of the reputation of the force? Because there are many thousands who do the right thing multiple times every single day that don't make news. And it, all it takes is one or two rogue officers, allegedly rogue officers, and all of a sudden it's headline news for a week. How do you restore trust in well, the police force? The, the community of New South Wales have trust in their police force. And as you say, this is one incident out of many, many calls for service. Over two million calls of service every year that we respond to for all sorts of things. So I'm sure that the community can be reassured that New South Wales Police will carry on with the job that we always do. Commissioner, you have tell us about these charges laid? Uh, within the last hour. Commissioner, are you able to explain what the reaction of the family was to the news that there have been charges laid? No, I can't up update you on that. Are you Why? able to explain the, um, how the LEWC investigation will operate now that there are criminal charges laid? Uh, that will still um, be maintained parallel to the criminal investigation. 
Why are they on suspended leave without pay rather than suspended entirely? I'm not sure I understand the question. So the officer has been suspended from the workplace? So it's permanent, it's not going to Well, it, that will be subject to the court and the outcomes and my, my deliberations later down the track. Mindful that your answer will be circumspect here because it is going to be before the court and there's one of your officers as well. Um, it has been reported and, and you would know of what is alleged to be a disturbingly cavalier attitude from somebody with a taser in his gun standing in front of a 95 year old officer. Are you dreading what's going to be coming out of this? I mean, I've heard. Uh... He's asking about the outcome, like for the police. Are you dreading what's going to come out of this as opposed to what went wrong and how are you going to make this right? See, the reporter is literally leading, leading this this so-called police officer, head of the police, completely. They, the whole point of the press is, is it should be, it should be adversarial because we need to hold them accountable. I didn't mean disrespectful, adversarial, meaning we're asking the hard questions. That's critical. Without an adversarial press, there is no free press. Then you're just basically being propaganda for the government or for the police, which for the most part, mainstream media is not all of it. There are great investigative reporters. They're far and few between. But there are some. Um, what's in that footage? And really, that will be for a court to decide now. But I don't you, want to preempt it. Are you are you dreading people seeing it? Well, I I am concerned about what that will um, reveal, and that I'm going to go back a little here. A disturbingly cavalier attitude from somebody with a taser in his gun standing in front of a 95 year old officer. Are you dreading what's going to be coming out of this? I mean, I've heard. Um, what's in that footage and really that will be for a court to decide now but i don't want to preempt it are you are you dreading she won't look at the footage of a crime against a 95 year old great grandmother that works for her i haven't heard anything this insane in a while people saying it. well I don't you want to know the truth lady don't you want to know the truth the answer is obviously not I am concerned about what that will um, reveal and that will be borne out in court like any other court matter. Commissioner, just to clarify, it is what's on that footage that has led to the charges tonight? No, it's not. It's not. The decision about le commencing legal proceedings is based on all the evidence and all the material, so including statements from witnesses, experts and footage and any anything else that's gone into the... At first you said it wasn't based on the footage, now she's saying that was part of it, why the charges were made of evidence. It will form part of the brief of evidence. Are you aware whether the officer involved was breath tested any time afterwards, given the fact that he was called in, uh, he was off duty at the time? Oh. I want to make sure you understand this, ladies and gentlemen. He's asking, was there a breath test to find out alcohol? Should be a drug test as well. The officer who ended up in with her unaliving, with, the, with Claire now is unaliving, he wasn't even on duty. He was called in off duty. What state was he in? That's actually a good question. There's one good question. Here we go. One for mainstream media, 99 against mainstream media for this particular one in Australia. I have to check that. It is routine that if a, when a critical incident is declared that that does happen as a matter of course. Is the officer in hospital at the moment? Pardon? Is the officer in hospital at the moment? I'm not aware that he is. Um, he's certainly been notified and served process. Um, but certainly our, our thoughts are with the Nallan family right, right now. Yeah, so moving forward, he's been charged. The focus tomorrow, will that be back on the family and, and looking after Mr well, It's always been on the family. And in fact, Assistant Commissioner Cotter and the commander visited the family tonight. So that remains our concern. The fact that you've called a, a, a media conference now, uh, 10 minutes before we're off air, I mean, shows the urgency of this. And I guess the urgency to get the message out that there are no cover-ups, that you That's don't right. go soft. The message they want to get out. To, again, this reporter is feeding her the freaking answers. You want to get the message that there's no cover-up. What message does this send? Is there a cover-up? You won't watch the video, police commissioner. That stinks of a cover-up to me. Why won't you watch the video so you can know actually what happened and not the hearsay of witness statement so you will actually know the truth? People lie. People have misperceptions. The video doesn't lie. And you're a liar. You're a cover-up artist because you won't... Face the truth and watch this video. 
and then face an actual group of reporters who actually ask the hard questions. Coward. Charge. Is, there, is it true to say that there was an urgency about getting this message out? Well, I committed very early on that as soon as I had an update, I would provide it. And so within an hour of commencing legal proceedings, I'm here in front of you. What was the reaction of the officer to the charges? I, I don't know. I wasn't present for that. But uh, obviously, we'll see what happens in court now. But thank you for will, coming. Will thank Mr. you. Will be able to speak at all? Paul, can we ask you a couple of questions? I mean, I'll Look at her body language as she walks away. Very, very weird. Very strange. She's hiding a lot. You can tell from her body language. She's obviously, she's hiding a lot. She, and she probably saw the video, by the way. There's no freaking way she didn't. She's a liar as well, most likely. Operationally uh, as well uh, for you, this has been a very tough week. Um, oh, yeah, it, it, it's a tough week. But we've also had a lot of other business that we've had to attend to. But it has been a tough week. How do you, I was saying to, to Ma'am Webb just then, how do you, how do you restore the, uh, the, the reputation of the force? I think it's just um, day by day, week by week, and we just continue, you know, to do the job that we do, and I think it just has to happen gradually. Is anything going to change more broadly? Are you respond to incidents at aged care homes specifically? Look, I think a lot of things come out of a critical incident investigation, use of taser, how it's used, and that's, um, that's par for the course. It's what we do, and we'll review what occurred. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Smells of cover-up, smells of police can do no wrong. It's not just in the United States. Our brothers and sisters in Australia, they experience the same thing. And Australia doesn't have our constitution. Now, we have a constitution. However, it is not really being utilized most of the time by police or by the courts. And that's something in my police reform. We need to get back to the foundation and follow the Constitution, which is the ultimate law of the land. If it's not followed, then we're not free. And the ultimate law of the land is being broken. So whether it's United States, whether it's United Kingdom, whether it's Australia, you have an authoritarian problem with police. And this is just one of, of hundreds of thousands, millions of incidents per year, collectively of the police throughout the world. Now, what can you do in the United States to create police reform? And I've been talking with Sean with Long Island Audits and working together with him to create police reform. And number one is call two senators, Senator Schumer and Senator Tim Scott, Democrat and Republican. This is bipartisan. And you could say anything you want about them. This is not about liking or not liking them. They will take these phone calls seriously. I guarantee you. It is important to let them know that we, the people, demand police reform. And for every single phone call they receive, there's a formula where they multiply that by a particular number to determine how many people in the United States want a particular issue. I cannot underline this enough. And I want to thank Sean of Long Island Audits profoundly for featuring and supporting and for encouraging all of his subscribers and supporters to call Senator Schumer Senator Tim Scott and Mayor Adams because of all the NYPD arrests which are going on with auditors simply recording in a police lobby, which they have a right to. Not just auditors, anyone. I just covered a story yesterday. A little old 61-year-old grandmother, she was viciously thrown to the ground arrested and, had her, arrested and had her elbow broken because cops didn't want her filming in the police lobby when she was trying to pick up a, a police report of something that was stolen from her. So please call. It matters. I guarantee you it matters. There's many things we're going to do, but two things you could do, call, and the numbers are here, Senator Schumer and Senator Tim Scott. Call them now, demanding police reform. Be respectful, be polite, be firm, and call every day and ask your friends and family to call as well. I guarantee you this will make this the number one issue, which it needs to be, on their domestic agenda. If we continue, we the people continue the call. Thank you for your support. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. Please share this video. I so appreciate you so much. Thank you and stay tuned for my next video as we collectively, we the people, take back our country and create police reform once and for all so we can once again be free.